Happy Easter. I'm Gregory Mansfield, the rector here at the Episcopal Church of St. Bernard de Clavaux, worshiping in the ancient Spanish monastery in Miami. I'm standing in the gardens outside of the monastery cloisters. The monastery was originally constructed in northern Spain, in the province of Segovia, in a small town called Sacramenia. Construction began in 1133 and was completed in the year 1141. And for over 750 years, the monastery was home to an order of Cistercian monks. And then in the 1830s, there was civil unrest. The monastery was abandoned and partially destroyed. And it sat that way for over 100 years until William Randolph Hearst purchased the monastery and some outbuildings and had them shipped to the United States. In the 1920s, they ended up in a warehouse in Brooklyn, New York, because of the Great Depression and World War II. After Hearst's death in 1952, the monastery was acquired by businessmen in Ohio, and they were transported and reconstructed here in Miami on the present site. Construction took about 19 months as 35,000 stones, some of them weighing a ton and a half, were put into the place once again. The monastery is now a church again, and the Episcopal Church of St. Bernard celebrates mass and other services here all through the year. Before the pandemic, we had about 80,000 visitors who came every year as pilgrims and tourists. And we invite you now into the cloisters as we worship Christ and his resurrection this Easter Sunday. Aleluya, Cristo ha resucitado, es verdad, el Señor ha resucitado, aleluya. El Señor sea con ustedes, oremos. Dios omnipotente, que por medio de tu Hijo unigénito, Jesucristo, has vencido la muerte y nos abriste la puerta de la vida eterna, concede a los que celebramos con gozo el día de la resurrección del Señor, que seamos resucitados de la muerte, del pecado, 
por tu Espíritu, mediante Jesucristo nuestro Señor, que vive y reina contigo, y el Espíritu Santo, un solo Dios, ahora y por siempre. Amén. La, pre, la première lecture du livre des Actes, chapitre 10. Pierre a commencé à parler à Corneille et aux autres gentils. Je comprends vraiment que Dieu ne montre aucune partialité, mais dans chaque nation, quiconque le craint et fait ce qu'il est juste lui est acceptable. Vous connaissez le message qu'il a envoyé au peuple d'Israël. 
prêchant la paix par Jésus-Christ. Il est le Seigneur de tout. Nous sommes témoins de tout ce qu'il a fait en Judée et à Jérusalem. Ils l'ont mis à mort en le pendant à un arbre. Mais Dieu l'a ressuscité le troisième jour et lui a permis d'apparaître, non à tout le peuple, mais à nous qui avons été choisis par Dieu comme témoins et qui avons mangé et bu avec lui après sa résurrection d'entre les morts. Il nous a commandé de prêcher au peuple et de témoigner qu'il est celui ordonné par Dieu comme juge des vivants et des morts. Tous les prophètes témoignent de lui que quiconque croit en lui reçoit le pardon des péchés par son nom, la parole du Seigneur. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted, and we will rejoice and be glad in it.
The epistle this morning is taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in return received, in which you also stand, through which you are also being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all of the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. The word of God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you leap weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Holy and Undivided Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. This morning we've got a great topic, a great passage of Scripture, and a great hope in Jesus. If this pandemic hasn't kept you completely at home, and you've been to any stores lately, you know that we have commercialized Easter in the same way that we have commercialized Christmas. In fact, when the last sale of Valentine's Day candy is gone, they are immediately replaced on the seasonal items with baskets and paper green grass and plastic eggs. And just as Santa Claus is the world's symbol of Christmas, so the Easter Bunny is the symbol of Easter. I'll concede that it's fun to receive Easter baskets and to eat marshmallow chicks, chocolate bunnies, and jelly beans. My favorite memory as a child at Easter was being at Grandma and Grandpa's house for the Easter ham and all of my aunts and uncles and cousins. But before all that, being at home with my sister Lisa, looking for eggs that we had colored all over the yard, and then afterwards emptying our Easter baskets and trading candies back and forth. And I also can see that the Easter Bunny is a likable enough character, but I can't figure out what the message of the Easter Bunny is. In fact, my problem with the Easter Bunny is not so much what he says, but what he doesn't say. The Easter Bunny doesn't give us a true picture of the meaning of Easter. 
And I heard a story about a little boy whose father gave him his money to give in the Sunday school class. The little boy was only about four years old. But when the Sunday school was over and he came back to meet up with his parents, his dad noticed that he still had the two dollars that he had given him. And he asked his son, why didn't you give the offering to Jesus in Sunday school? And the little boy with only the little earnestness that a little kid can have said, well, dad, Jesus doesn't show up for Sunday school. And you know, that's the thing. They would have all been surprised if he had. And they were surprised on that first Easter morning as well, because nobody expected Jesus to show up. This morning, our gospel story is one of four resurrection stories that we hear in the Gospel of John. And from this story, it persists from that first Easter morning and persists from all of the centuries to this day. Why are you weeping, Mary? Why are you still crying? Don't you know the truth about me? Do you not know that I, Jesus, have been raised from the dead and that whoever lives and believes in me will never die? Why then are you still weeping? Why are you weeping? This is a question that echoes through the centuries and echoes in the halls of our monastery today. So I ask you that question. Knowing that Jesus has been raised from the dead, why do we still weep at funerals? And when our loved ones die, why do we still cry? Why do all human beings weep and mourn at the death of our loved ones? I mean, it's a universal trait. This weeping at the loss of a loved one, it's in all cultures. It goes across any nationality, ethnic, or linguistic group. And it's even in all religions. No matter who you are, when someone you love dies, you mourn, you grieve, and you weep. Tears on the outside or maybe silent tears on the inside. But we all cry. We feel our loss and we can be devastated. Now there's so many different burial customs and rituals in every situation in every culture. But all human beings are the same in this regard. We cry when our loved ones die. So when we ask, well, why is this? I mean, the psycho psychologist will tell us it's because, you know, unlike other animals, we human beings are connected in a different way. We're deeply attached to each other. And because we human beings are so deeply attached to each other, we're also wounded by the loss of a loved one. It's as if our hearts are being torn apart. That's the way it is when we're so deeply attached to one another. When death comes, it snatches that person from us. For example, in the Old Testament, we have the story of David and Jonathan. And when Jonathan was killed, we read that David wept for his best friend. David and Jonathan were bonded at the hips, their hearts and their minds. David's heart was torn apart when he learned about the death of his best friend. And that's the way it is with us human beings. And in the New Testament, we have the story about Jesus and his good friend, Lazarus. And when Lazarus died, the Bible tells us that Jesus was grieved deeply grieved for his friend. And the Bible says that Jesus wept. And of course, in the original languages of the Bible, the word wept has that connotation of sobbing, being in deep emotional pain. But here's the thing when we think about it. Jesus knew about eternal life, but he still wept deeply at the loss of his friend. The two were also deeply attached, as Jesus was to both of the sisters, Mary and Martha. 
And Jesus' heart was torn apart when he learned about the death of his friend. That's the way it is with us human beings. Why are you weeping, Mary? Is it because she was so deeply attached to Jesus and connected to him? I believe that the reason that people weep at times of death can also be because of the potential love that would have been in the future that the deceased person would have shared, that that's what's taken away. For example, in a previous parish that I served years ago, we had a little seven-year-old who was killed by a car. And the parents and that family and so many of their friends grieved deeply for the loss of that child's potential life, for all of the joy that Jeffrey would have created for his friends, for his childhood years, for his teenage years, for the graduations, possibly a wedding, children, grandchildren, for all the joy that Jeffrey would have brought to the people that would have come into his life and he would have gone into theirs. I believe that when we weep and when we grieve, we, we weep for that potential, that unknown that was never completed. It's the could have, would have, should have been. And I also believe that we weep because we feel sorry for ourselves, because we've lost so much with their death. Our future going forward will not have them in it. Yes, it doesn't negate the fact that we know that there's eternal life, and it doesn't negate the fact that we know that they're now at the heart of God. No, it's that they're not with us and that they won't be there for Christmas, for the birthdays, for the family activities, all of those things. And knowing all that, I believe that the Gospel of John is telling us that the truth of the Gospel is stronger than our tears, that the Spirit of Christ is stronger than our sorrow, that God is stronger than our grief, that Easter is stronger than Good Friday, and that life is stronger than death. You know, at the end of the story for today, Mary Magdalene was no longer weeping, not sobbing, not crying. By the end of the gospel, Mary was convinced that she had seen the Lord. And because she had seen the risen Lord, that affected her tears and her crying. And the Bible tells us that Mary went and hurried to tell the other disciples, I have seen the Lord. Mary Magdalene was then no longer weeping. She had seen the risen Lord. And instead of tears, there was now triumph. The resurrection of Jesus changed everything. And we've often heard, you know, the remarkable, awesome truth of the gospel that how did 12 peasant men who were fishermen and farmers and carpenters and a tax collector, how in the world did they multiply to where we are today that every third person on the planet identifies with being Christian? And the answer is, of course, the resurrection. The resurrection changed everything. Time was split into two between B.C. and A.D. And no other event has impacted the world as much as the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's amazing to think about these facts, and I know you've all heard them before, but I rehearsed them today on Easter, that Jesus never wrote a book. In fact, he never wrote anything down. There are no letters, there's no writings of Jesus, and yet there are more books written about him than any other subject in the world. And Jesus never composed a song, but there's more music written about Jesus Christ than any other subject, bar none, in history. And Jesus never drew any pictures or made any sculptures. He didn't make any kind of art, but there's more art depicting Jesus Christ and his life and his events and his miracles and the resurrection and the ascension and his birth. There's more art about Jesus than any other subject in the world. 
And Jesus never traveled more than 100 miles away from his home. And yet, you can find followers of Jesus in every nook and cranny on the planet. Jesus changed history. Jesus changed the world. And Jesus can change your life. Amen. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Creador del cielo y la tierra, de todo lo visible e invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Nacido del Padre antes de todos los siglos, Dios de Dios, luz de luz. Dios verdadero de Dios verdadero, engendrado, no creado. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. Por nuestra causa fue crucificado en tiempos de Poncio Pilato. Padeció y fue sepultado. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Que procede del Padre y del Hijo, que con el Padre y el Hijo recibe una misma adoración y gloria, y que habló por los profetas. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge it when baptized for the forgiveness of sins. Esperamos la resurrección de los muertos y la vida del mundo futuro. Amen. The prayers of the people for this Easter Sunday. And our prayers this morning come from our mother church in England. Lord, your resurrection has set you free, free from the constraints of human existence, outside the limitation of time and space, free to be here with us now in our worship and fellowship, and free to be with us always for you in your freedom. You have bound yourself to us with a promise. Lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of time. We pray, Lord, for those who need to feel you close, we need, who need the assurance of your love, the encouragement of your spirit, we pray to you, O Lord, and the response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are persecuted, who are discriminated against, who are mocked because of their faith or the color of their skin or because of who they have chosen to love. We pray to you, O Lord. We pray for those who are imprisoned, who are tortured, who are exiled, because they have fought, struggled, and spoken out for the rights of their people. We pray to you, O Lord. We pray for those who are homeless and destitute, who are hungry, who are refugees, because of the selfishness and apathy of the world. We pray to you, O Lord. We pray for those who are filled with guilt, who are brokenhearted, who are perplexed, because a relationship has gone wrong. We pray to you, O oh Lord. We pray for those who are feeling fed up, who are in discomfort, who are afraid because they are ill in body, mind, or spirit. We pray to you, O oh Lord. And we pray for those who are numbed, who are angry, especially because of racism, homophobia, and injustice. And we pray for those who are desolate because they have been bereaved by the death of someone close to them. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for those caught up in racism, in violence, in hatred, especially the innocent victims of these evils. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray at this time of financial uncertainty for those who have lost jobs, those who struggle to pay bills, and those who have the power 
to effect positive change. We pray to you, O Lord. Be with us all, Lord, in all our daily struggles as we seek to follow you. Be with us all, Lord, in our periods of doubt and despair, and in our times of happiness, health, and loving. Be with us all, Lord, until that time when in your, in your kingdom of love, our joy will know no end. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Hi, everyone. My name is Leontine Allen, your new junior warden. I'd like to welcome you to the Church of St. Bernard de Clairvaux. And I hope you all have a nice and happy Easter. Thank you for joining us. We're glad you're here worshiping with us at the ancient Spanish monastery and the Episcopal Church of St. Bernard de Clairvaux. Whether you're across town or across the globe, we welcome you. The church is now open for services on Sundays in English at 8 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. and in Spanish at 12.15 p.m. The services are by reservation only. If you did not receive a link to find the service and you found us through Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, and you would like to make a reservation to attend church services next week, please contact us through that same social media and we will get a reservation for you. We don't know how long we will have limited numbers, but our capacity will be limited. And of course, we'll be following all of the CDC and diocesan guidelines, mask wearing, social distancing, no singing, etc. I know that we couldn't do what we're doing without your financial support. Thank you to all of our members and friends who have filled out a pledge card and returned it. If you did not receive a pledge card and would like to contribute to the financial ongoing of the ministries, outreach and services of the Ancient Spanish Monastery, please contact us so we can let you have one of those. You can also text a gift. Below me on the screen is a number. You don't call that number. You text and that starts a dialogue where you can enter your credit card for either a one-time gift or a monthly gift. We're grateful for all of the ways people support us, whether that's giving on our website or dropping off a check here at our location on Dixie Highway in North Miami Beach. Also want to let you know that all of the announcements for the church at the beginning of the service will be repeated again at the end. After the dismissal and final hymn, you will see the announcements repeated. One of the things you can do to support the monastery that doesn't cost any money and only a few minutes of your time is to like, subscribe, and share. By doing that on social media, you increase our metrics and people will discover us in their social media. That is one way you could be an evangelist and let people know about the Episcopal Church of St. Bernard, the Diocese of Southeast Florida, and even the Anglican Church worldwide. Please do that and help be that witness. Let us remember the words of our Lord Jesus, who said it is more blessed to give than to receive.
The special intention of the Mass this morning is in thanksgiving for the recovery of John Petrosky, who suffered a stroke on Thursday and recovered so quickly with medical care. And we just give thanks for that. And also we ask your prayers for Nancy and John as they go forward. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he's the true Easter lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he's destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he's won for us everlasting life. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you've delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you've brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, we remember his death, death. We, we proclaim, proclaim his, his resurrection. resurrection, we, we await, await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ <clears throat> and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Bernard and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation.
by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. La oración de la comunión espiritual. Jesús mío, creo que eres verdaderamente presente en el sagrado sacramento del altar. Te amo por encima de todas las cosas y anhelo en mi alma, como ahora no puedo recibir sagradamente, al menos espiritualmente, mi corazón. Como si ya hubieses venido, te abrazo y me uno complete a completamente a ti y nunca permitas que me separe de ti. Amén. The prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord, amen. And now may the Lord Jesus who walks on wounded feet walk with you to the end of your road. And may the Lord Jesus, who serves with wounded hands, enable you to serve others. And may the Lord Jesus, who loves with a wounded heart, be your love forever. Love God wherever you go, and may see the Lord Jesus in everyone you meet. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain with you and those you love this Easter. Amen.
The Mass is now ended. So now let us all go in peace to love and serve the Lord on this very special day. And remember, wear your masks. <laughs>